What's up guys? Welcome back to my little Subaru only shop here in Northern California. Today's video is going to be part two in a deep dive into how coolant flows through Subaru engines and how those reverse cooling mod kits work. In part one of this series, I actually walked through the fundamentals of how coolant flows on my whiteboard. And then I jumped over to my short block and we talked about exactly how coolant passes through that water pump into the short block and how it fills that lower chamber in the short block. Now in this video, in part two, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how that coolant flows through the heads of the short block. And I'm gonna talk about why cylinder number four has all these issues with it and why these reverse cooling mod kits are designed to solve those issues. Thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. My name's Luke, this is the Super Only Show. my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's jump over the head and let's talk a little bit about how the coolant passes through the head because that's a key piece this whole system. And that's the whole reason why these reverse cooling mods are on the market. Okay, here's the left side head for this EJ205 engine. This is the bottom of the head. This is actually the surface of the head that mats to the engine block and has a head gasket that sits against it. This is the top of the head. And this is actually where that intake manifold and those TGVs will bolt up to. Now remember these head gaskets sit between the cylinder heads and that short block. And these head gaskets are actually gonna be the smallest restriction point for the flow of that coolant from that lower passage that's in the short block through these little kidney shaped restrictions into your cylinder heads. And if I lay this cylinder gasket up against this cylinder head, you can get a better idea of how it sits and where those coolant passages are. Coolant is actually coming out of these kidney shaped slots. Remember, this lower portion, that's actually for oil drain back. So there's no coolant going through this slot or through this slot right here. And there's no oil or coolant going through any of these portions. These are actually where all the head studs, where all the head bolts are, these round portions right there. So the only place where the coolant is passing through this head gasket is through these little kidney slots right here. And this head is oriented correctly for up versus down. This is the bottom of the head. These are the studs where the exhaust manifold screws up to. And this is the top of the head. So these are actually the bottom ports where the coolant fills up in the short block and then enters through these little kidney shaped slots and then goes into the head and then passes through the head and then comes out these top slots right here. And then goes back into the short block, exits the short block, into the crossover pipe and then goes over to the radiator and then gets cooled through the radiator. Now the first thing I want you guys to notice is that these kidney shaped little slots in this head gasket are definitely a restriction to coolant flow. If I remove this head gasket, you guys can see those slots are actually quite a bit bigger than the slots in that head gasket. If I wanted to, I could carve this one open all the way down to this point right here that I'm outlining with my little pointer and this one can get carved out just a little bit wider as well. If I pull this up, you can kind of see. Look how much bigger this little slot is than the little slot that's in the head gasket. That's the slot that's in the head, and this is the slot in the, that's in the head gasket. And remember, the short block has a big open passage, so this is really the only restriction, is the head gasket. And if we look over here, this right here is quite a bit larger cross-sectional area than this area. So that means we're gonna get a lot more volume, a lot more flow through this passage than this passage right here. And if we open this one up to be the same size as this passage, we'll actually flow more coolant into this head. And as long as we can flow the same volume of coolant out of the head, we're actually gonna be allowing more volume of coolant to flow through the head. And that's definitely gonna be a good thing. And that's definitely gonna cool the head. So I'll be honest, guys, I'm seriously considering shaving these head gaskets to open up these ports because you can actually open up the bottom ports on both sides and you can open up the top ports. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate about how much I open up the bottom port. That way I can open up the same percentage up on the top ports and I can open up all, I guess, eight of these ports, four on this side and four on this side. That way I'll have more coolant they can get from the bottom of that short block through this head gasket into this head and then back into my short block and out into the, in, into the radiator. Okay, so the next step is to take a closer look at how coolant actually flows through this head. And I'm gonna take a close up view of that. I'm gonna bring my light back over into this head and I'm gonna shine that light into this head so we can get a better idea of where the coolant is flowing through these ports. Because for most people, we really have no idea of exactly where the passages are in these Subaru heads. 
This is the left side head, which means it's cylinder number two and number four. Number two is in the front of the engine. That's this side of the head. And number four is in the back of the engine. So this is cylinder number four, and this is cylinder number two. And you can always tell that by where the camshafts are. There's no camshaft sticking out on this side, so this has to be the back. Now this reverse cooling mod actually taps into this plug right here on the back of cylinder number four. And I've already loosened it so I can take it all the way out for you guys. Boom. And I'll take the camera off so you can see a little bit closer of where that port goes. And I'll shine the light in there so you can get a better idea. Okay, you can't see very much. You're basically just seeing into the back of the combustion chamber. But it goes in about an inch, an inch and a half. And that's actually right against the back side of that combustion chamber. If I zoom out, you can see that's where the valves are, and that's where the combustion vents taking place. And when I have that light in there, you can kind of see the coolant chamber in the back right there. And I can shine the light through this chamber. You can kind of see how it goes in there, kind of webs around, back behind the head. And if you go right here, you can kind of see the webs in right there, right? And the same thing down here. So all these passages right here are all connected just a little bit in this kind of complex little casting void space behind the combustion chambers. And again, coolant enters through these bottom ports, through that lower portion of your short block, enters through these bottom ports, they pass into the ports, positive pressure, get pushed in through here, get squished everywhere behind the head, and then ends up coming out through the two kidney shapes in the top, back into the short block. So that's coolant coming out in this direction towards us, goes into the short block, and then goes out through that little port that goes to your crossover pipe. But where that exit port and where that crossover pipe is, is actually part of the problem. If you think about it, coolant is actually coming in right about here in the front of the engine where cylinder number two is. Remember, this is cylinder number two and this is cylinder number four. Coolant comes in right here, fills up this whole lower chamber, and then goes, passes in, goes around the head, and then goes back into this chamber right here through the head gasket, and then comes out right through this chamber into the crossover pipe and over to your radiator, right? What happens is, is because there's an inlet point right here, which is where the highest pressure point is, and the exit point right here, which is where the lowest pressure point is, you actually create preferential flow paths from this point through the head out to this point. Coolant and all liquids, this comes from fluid mechanics, all liquids basically follow the path of pressure differentials. Pressure differentials are really what drive the flow of fluids. And the pressures in this system are really at the highest point right here and at the lowest point right here, where the coolant exits. And anytime you have fluids where the maximum pressure differential is from one point, point A to point B, that's where you're gonna have preferential paths develop. And that's exactly what's happening with these Subaru motors. And that's also exactly what these reverse cooling mods are actually aiming at addressing. These reverse cooling mods actually install a point in the back of cylinder number four, which is actually if the cylinder head is sitting on the engine, cylinder number four is on the back of the engine, which is over here, they actually tap into the back of cylinder number four and they allow coolant to exit cylinder number four and get sucked into the water pump. And what that does is that actually creates a second negative pressure point for that flow. And if you think about fluid mechanics and the way fluids flow, if you create a second negative pressure point, you're actually gonna create more flow from the inlet point over to the exit point because you actually have another low pressure point where the coolant can exit. So you'll have flow over to that point and you'll have flow up to this point to the crossover pipe. And that's basically the fundamental concept of these reverse cooling mods. So what is it with a cylinder number four? Why does this particular cylinder have a problem in these flat four Subaru motors? Well, there's several reasons that these cylinders have problems. And the fundamental reason that these reverse cooling mod kits are even on the market is because over the years, it's become clear in the Subaru community that cylinder number four has a disproportionate number of cylinder failures. Basically, Cylinder number four seems to be one of the weak links in these Subaru motors. And a lot of people have found that when you start pushing these motors, you start making higher horsepower, and you start running more aggressive tunes, that the first cylinder that goes is that number four piston. And a lot of time, it's the ring lands in that piston. If you have internal damage to your engine, it's probably gonna be cylinder number four. Now, why is that? Now, I'm not an engine tuner, and a lot of the reason has to do with the fuel maps and the ignition maps that tuners run on these engines. So I can't speak to that with any authority. But one of the fundamental reasons that cylinder number four is a problem is actually where the knock sensor is located. The knock sensor on the EJ series of these Subaru flat four motors is actually located right over cylinder number four. And because of that, the knock sensor actually picks up the knock signal from the number four combustion chamber 
stronger than any other combustion chamber. And that's also the reason that the factory ECU is programmed to have a slightly more aggressive tune for the number four cylinder. That way, if you have a bad batch of gas or if you have any other issues with the air fuel mixture, cylinder number four will be the first one to knock and that knock sensor will always pick it up first. And that way, the ECU knows to retard the timing, to bring it back. That way, it's not gonna damage any of the other cylinders. So essentially, the strategy for the ECU programming in these cars is basically to use number four as a guinea pig, and anytime there's an issue, that cylinder and that piston is gonna be the first one to see it. And the second factor is definitely gonna be the location of cylinder number four. I think this is gonna be a lot less of a factor than the knock sensor and the fuel maps and the timing maps that are used, but the fact that cylinder number four is located behind cylinder number two, and that cylinder number two is exposed to that fresh incoming ambient air from the front of the car, that leads me to think that cylinder number two might get a little bit more cooling just being in that location. But one of the biggest factors is actually the way the coolant flows through the cylinder head. That coolant is doing a majority of the cooling of that combustion chamber. As a matter of fact, that coolant is doing almost all of the cooling of the combustion chamber. Some of the cooling takes place from heat transferring through that aluminum head and radiating to the ambient air, but most of the cooling, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was 95% of the cooling, takes place from the coolant that circulates through this head. So the way the coolant flows through the head is actually key to controlling the temperatures that build in those combustion chambers. And that's what this video is all about. We're taking a deep dive into how the coolant flows through the short block and flows through these heads. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. There's actually going to be a part three of this series where I dive into coolant flow and these reverse cooling mod kits. In part three, I actually make a really cool thing called a flow net or a flow field where I show exactly where the flow paths take place inside these Subaru heads. That actually helps give you a better idea about why there's preferential flow paths around cylinder number two and why cylinder number four actually has stagnant flow, which leads to that cylinder number four overheating and that pre-ignition that we're trying to avoid. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video in this series. It's gonna be the third and final video in this three-part series, which I think have been a really comprehensive dive into how coolant flows to these Subaru engines and why you might wanna consider these reverse cooling mod kits. So thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. If you think this video will be valuable for any of your friends in the Subaru community, please go ahead and click the link and share it with your friends. Thanks again for checking out the video, guys. My name's Lou. Until next time, guys. Later! Thanks again for watching this video, guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast. And I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist, and I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru-related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's going to come up. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.